So here we're looking at the dynamic assessment of the hip muscles, also looking at the, the quads and, and the control, because remember, proximal hip control deficits are commonly seen with ITV symptoms. So I'm going to ask Harriet to do a single leg squat on the left leg. We're going to place the index fingers on the ASIS, or the bony prominence on the front of the pelvis. And we're going to take one leg up and then I'm going to ask Harriet to squat down nice and controlled so what i'm looking for here is how much knee valgus is occurring what's the distance from the hip down come back up again and keep going through that movement pattern it's very useful to have some some visual cues so record when you're doing this get the patient to do it in front of the mirror so they can see themselves we can slow down that video analysis so squatting down good again we're trying to avoid that drift and that hip pushing out so we can see here, Harry's got really good control of those hip abductors on that left side. And we're also going to compare to the unaffected side. A couple more. Good. Excellent. And we're, we're looking at, we're adapting a knee strategy. So she's comfortable loading the knee. The knee's coming over the toes. She's not afraid. She's not avoiding it. And you can stop there. Perfect. We'll often see that with ITV symptoms is that they're afraid to go into that 20 to 30 degrees flexion because that's the compression zone where they feel their pain. So as a result, what they do when they bend, they'll tend to hinge the hip to get the range from here, which essentially will put a higher strain rate on that IT band. So we want to make sure we improve that capacity and get them comfortable loading through a good proximal hip control.